thank you very much indeed for coming uh, to this debate, which is called uh, Thinking Straight. The social drug of choice in Western culture is alcohol, yet it is estimated to kill 100,000 people in the year in the UK alone. The Independent Scientific Committee on Drugs puts it near the top of the list of dangerous drugs, while others like ecstasy, LSD and cannabis come much lower down. Should we wean ourselves off alcohol or even ban it and instead promote other less harmful but currently illegal alternatives? Or do we think the benefits of alcohol are just too great to take this seriously? Now, on the platform with us on the far left is Nigel Inkster. He's the former Director of Operations and Intelligence for, the, um, for MI6, the British Secret Intelligence Service. And he's also the author of several books, including Drugs, Insecurity, and Failed States, The Problems of Prohibition, and currently Senior Advisor to the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Next to me is Thangam Debenez. She's the Labour MP for Bristol West. She describes herself as a democratic socialist and a supporter of fettered capitalism. And in 2018, she took part in uh, the BBC documentary Drugs Land, most or large part of it shot in her constituency. Um, on my right is uh, Michael Linksy, Professor of Addictions in the National Addiction Center. Michael has published extensively uh, on issues related to cannabis use and cannabis use disorders. He was principal investigator of the Midwestern Alcoholism Research Center. Also on my right is Richard Bentel. He's professor of clinical psychology at the University of Sheffield, and his books include Madness Explained and Doctoring the Mind. And he's best known for his research into psychosis, hallucinations, and paranoid delusions. And um, right, off we go. Now, why aren't we treating the dangers of alcohol more seriously? And that assumes that we're all agreed that alcohol is really dangerous. Is it, Nigel? Uh, well, I'm not an expert on this particular um, area, other than as uh, an enthusiastic consumer of the product. Um, but I mean, I think um, you know, there's a range of psychoactive substances that human beings have a propensity to use and abuse. And it's not actually just uh, human beings. As a small child in Africa, I've seen elephants getting drunk on uh, fermented fruit. So uh, you know, other species apparently feel much the same way. Um, as ourselves. Um, and, you know, I, I, I take the view that um, the whole question of um, use of psychoactive substances is one of those issues that you're never going to be able to solve. It's something you have to manage. Um, and the question is, you know, how you do manage it. I but mean, our question is, are, is society, yeah. do you think society understands the dangers? Before we get on to the question of how you manage it. Yeah. The suggestion in this question is that people don't quite understand how dangerous it is, yeah. and politicians in particular are rather scared of pointing that out. Well, I think there is that, because of course we derive in this country and other countries enormous revenues from uh, alcohol consumption, and uh, you know, no government would lightly uh, forego that, uh, that, that, that kind of support. But I think in terms of um, education uh, about the risks, um, there is probably, you know, there are probably things that we could uh, do differently. We keep on getting from the chief medical officer different assessments of how much alcohol is safe. And then you hear, you know, some medical specialists saying, well, you know, no amount of alcohol is safe. The only thing to do is, you know, is to drink water. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, life is about risk and about managed risk. And, uh, you know, there, there, there are lots of things um, that ideally we should stop doing altogether, but realistically, we're not going to. And alcohol, I do think, has an upside. So your, your suggestion is not that we uh, don't understand, on the whole, the dangers of mm. alcohol. Your argument will be about the way in which we deal with that. But yeah. you don't mm. think what's called for immediately is a mass advertising campaign about the dangers of alcohol. Well, no, but I think about a, a mass education campaign, which is more thoughtful and sensitive and, 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 and nuanced, um, might actually be helpful in terms of how you go about educating people to drink safely. Thangam, can I ask you uh, the same question? Um, 
Why aren't we treating the dangers of alcohol more seriously? Do you think we're treating alcohol seriously enough? Um, absolutely not. And, and, and I also know of the report in which the chief medical officer said that there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. And the reason the chief medical officer said there is no safe level of alcohol consumption is because there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. <laughs> but there is a managed risk approach, which we take to all sorts of risks in life. And I think there are four main reasons why we aren't treating those risks properly. Uh, one is that we either don't know the risks fully or we don't want to acknowledge them. In particular, people often know that alcohol is going to link with liver disease, but they may not realise that there's a causal link with breast, bowel and other forms of cancer. Indeed, I didn't until I had breast cancer, at which point it became relatively straightforward when a surgeon said to me, one of the things you can do to reduce your risk of recurrence of breast cancer is to stop drinking. It became relatively straightforward, not to become quite as teetotal as you asked earlier, but to become more of a Nana Royal approach to drinking. So a sherry every so often and a, a champagne at weddings uh, type of approach to alcohol, but certainly not habitual alcohol consumption. That would describe my position. And that's because I am more aware of the dangers of alcohol. But I also think the legal status confers some sort of illusion of safety. And that perhaps it poses challenges to those of us who want reform of the law on other drugs. I think we're socialised to treat alcohol consumption as the norm and also the alcohol lobby. So um, on my, uh, Nigel mentioned that politicians aren't very fond of pointing out the dangers of alcohol. Indeed, when I did, in a lovely article here called The Moment I Saw the Light About Alcohol and Cancer, um, I was immediately targeted by so-called academics, who turned out not to be quite that academic, representing the alcohol lobby, but disguising the fact they're representing the alcohol lobby, sending me spurious bits of pseudoscience telling me actually that I got it all wrong and alcohol was completely safe. So I think th there are four really clear reasons. I think there's also the dangers that people don't appreciate include not just the health dangers, but the wider social dangers, the dangers to public space, the dangers to intimate partner violence, for instance, which is the field I used to work in. There's any number of those dangers which people either don't acknowledge or don't want to acknowledge. But I'm not saying that if you just lectured everybody with the dangers, they'd all immediately become no, too right. total. Well, well, come on to that. But Michael, I mean, do you, again, do you think that there is a real problem in terms of education or of policy? Are, are people seized enough of the problems and that we should not worry so much about that? It is the way in which we deal with those problems that should be the focus. Uh, I mean, firstly, thank you for inviting me here. And I think one thing with alcohol is it is so embedded in our society. Alcohol is very much a part of our traditions. It's a part of so many functions and everything else. And I think because of that, people do minimize the problems. Some of it, as you said, is because there's a perception that it's legal, so it must be safe. And as soon as I turn 18, it's legal and therefore safe for me to drink. But that isn't the case in terms of actual safety. So there was a very large um, global project to try to estimate burden of disease associated with specific risk factors. And one of the things they looked at was alcohol consumption. In countries like the UK, alcohol accounts for about somewhere between 8 and 10% of all preventable illness and mortality. I'd actually like to compare that just to slightly... Um, hijack the session, to compare that with risks associated with cannabis use, which in that same project account for 0.2%, so 1 40th or 1 50th of the health harms associated with alcohol. But we have a far different approach to cannabis than we have for alcohol. Um, and it, it intrigues me, it is changing a lot in America at the moment where there is the emergence of a cannabis industry, which may include such things as advertising, quite aggressive marketing and so forth. In terms of, you know, we're so used to things in surrounding alcohol, including you know, the number of booths, which fortunately are available and I'll be visiting at least one of them later uh, you know, at this session. Um, but why do we treat cannabis differently from alcohol? But if, can we, I, I will want to pick up that specific <laughs> okay. point. But can I just ask, ask you here, do, do we need drugs in the sense that is there a basic human need for drugs in that it is a way of us coping with life, it is a way of maybe relaxing, which we will need to do periodically, because there would be mental health problems if we didn't relax. So is the question that you always have to balance, as it were, physical dangers 
physical health dangers and some mental health dangers associated with drugs with beneficial elements of drug use that may actually help hum human beings as a whole. And so that's something, do we need to keep that in mind? I mean, I think we do. There are positive um, aspects of any drug use, including alcohol or cannabis. I don't think we need those drugs, so. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.